need to pay attention to that when you're doing drapery, which is what this is called when you're painting and drawing it, drapery. And you can see how this curvature heads right toward that second pin. Clings more to the body, follows more of the shapes, folds, but very gently, very small, little. Very droopy, very thin. Even if I droop it over the same thing, see how quickly it makes little folds? You already spotted what kind of material it's made out of, and you're already sketching in your folds in the appropriate manner. So, so far you did everything that was fairly geometric. Mm -hmm. Even the plant had a little bit of geometry, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a ball. Right, and you could see, especially. you could see other geometric shapes in the leaves, how the flower was structured, how the stem with the smaller stems coming out was I'll somewhat, it. yes, it was like, there, you see that there is symmetry, but you are observing it at such an angle that it doesn't look too, too symmetric. So, anyways, at least it had its own structure, built-in structure. The fabric doesn't have much of its own structure. Yeah. So the fabric... So the fabric is following everything else. It's following all the other structures. So, all right, so what I did here is I took the very plain white fabric and I just drooped it over another structure, which underneath there is a cube. The cube gives you that corner. You see that sharp corner? Right here, right? And that corner provides you a break in the plane, a different break in the plane. So here it's the fabric attached to the vertical surface, it comes down a little bit, semi-vertically, but then it actually is pulled toward this corner here. Let me push it down a little bit more like that. So it's coming down, it's drooping down off of the cube, and you can somewhat see where the side of the cube is, and you can see somewhat where the side of the cube is, right? Actually, let me change this to where it's pointing toward that. That's well. So, all right. And I'm, I'm gonna adjust this. So I want the folds to be kind of like good looking as well. I don't want anything like no strange folds. And I want it to make sense and also have like very soft flow to it, right? So different fabrics, depending on different thickness, will have different flow. So you probably notice you have different fabrics. Something is a little more stiff. It has uh, harder, bigger folds. Something very soft has very fine little folds, right? So let's say you put a fabric like on a fluffy pillow, mm -hmm. so like, or it's a drooping down and there's a fluffy pillow. Does that mean there will be less folds? or? It dep depends on the fabric. Okay. So see how this one has a bit of a stiffness to it, right? It's mm -hmm. soft, it's not too, too thin, but it has a bit of a stiffness. And so it folds this a bit of a rigid, but very gentle folds, very soft folds. This one here, this one is t-shirt material. Very droopy, very thin. Even if I droop it over the same thing. See how quickly it makes little folds? Mm -hmm. And they are much thinner. thinner. They, they, they don't stand up, they ju don't jump up, they don't have this springiness to them. This is kind of like thicker folding. And this, look how many tiny little folds it forms very quickly. So let's say when you draw like these two clots, then like people could tell which one is exactly. like... Exactly. Oh, okay. So if you, if you look at the material drooping, especially if there are two separate ones, and you notice that this has a lot of smaller folds, very like fold, 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 like a lot of them overlapping, and especially the stripe shows you all the nuances, how they're folding exactly, and then you have this one that has much bigger, thicker folds, you know, you can see the light shadow reflection very, very easily in here. 
-hmm. you capture that you capture how the fabric is people the viewers will be able to tell okay like this is a thinner softer cloth this is a much stiffer one all right this one on the other hand is even stiffer linen doesn't want to fold very well mm -hmm. right it's very stiff look even just over over the wall here if I give it just a mild fold like this over the wall see how bulky it is see how thick this is to make it fold over the cube it wants to uh, form this like sharp turns very rigid very stiff so again another nature of cloth right mm. and uh, so you need to pay attention to that when you're doing drapery which is what this is called when you're painting and drawing it drapery uh, you study drapery just so you could do all kinds of different cloth on human body so whether people are just wrapped up in something whether they're wearing something like a t-shirt or a dress, flowing gown and whatever else. Once you study drapery, you will be able to see how it just follows the human form on a person. And then having studied all the different fabrics and tried painting and drawing different textures of the fabric, thicker, thinner, stiffer, softer, you will be able to portray that on the body way easier way faster. You'll look at it and say, oh, that's a very droopy soft t-shirt on somebody. No worries. The, I need to make those folds very fine, very narrow, very skinny and all of that. And immediately it looks like that t-shirt out of that kind of material without even doing a lot of drawing. Oh. From the sketch on, it already looks like it. See? So even when someone does like a complicated form, which makes it the shirt fold in some mm -hmm. way, you could already kind of follow it? Exactly. You already spotted what kind of material it's made out of, and you're already sketching in your folds in the pr appropriate manner. Yeah. See? So, like some of those wedding gowns, for instance, Sometimes they made out of stiffer material on purpose so that it would hold this poofy dress shape, the poofy skirt. So it holds that shape easier, they make them out of stiffer fabric. So all they need to do is put some ruffles underneath and already the fabric wants to sit on top of it in a very stiff type of manner forming that poofy skirt shape. Oh. That like the bell shape, right? You want something very soft, slimming looking, following the body curvatures and all your your wedding gown or any other gown would be designed out of like thinner flowing material that clings more to the body follows more of the shapes folds but very gently very small little narrow folds so nothing like this striped one like this more like the striped one yeah, yeah. so that's why the best thing is to start very very simple with a plain white fabric or a plain gray or just some solid plain color where you can easily fold it and do all the different folds light and shadow study how it works and then worry about more complicated areas objects subjects so anyways um, how you gonna draw it out before you paint it I'm do I'm gonna do it smaller so you're gonna position your paper vertically. It starts up there attached to the wall, it comes down vertically, so you want to do that as well. So because it's taking the shape of other forms, we have the wall, so it's somewhat following the wall, we have the cube, it's going a little bit flat of the, over the cube and then it's dropping down. That means you have to think about, all right, uh, how will I fit the whole thing? How am I going, where am I going to stop? Obviously, you're not going to paint the very fine detail of folds where it completely droops off the table, right? You don't want that. It's too much. So you want to take a section where it comes off the wall, where it hits the cube and hangs down from the cube. And then you have to decide yourself, say, say to yourself and then decide, how you gonna where is the cube gonna be is it gonna be like right in the middle is it gonna be like half this way half this way do i want this right in the middle 
or do I want this to be like the cube be a little bit lower that means that my whole fabric is drooping down this way right mm -hmm. or do I want it to be a little bit higher do I want to show more of the folds that are hanging down from the cube and less um, attention dedicated to here to up to above the cube or do I want to concentrate on how it is above the cube and a little bit less how it's hanging below the cube so I'll just that's how you think about it right I'm telling you how to think when you are when you yourself setting up something like this for yourself at home as a homework that's how you think about it mm -hmm. so what I want you to do in class is think about it as preparing for larger still lives and the cube represents a table on, on which the still life would be set up mm -hmm. and the fabric represents the drapery and you know how in a, in a lot of those artworks I showed you they would have a drapery coming from the back and back of the still life and then hitting the table and then drooping off and the objects would be on All right. the fabric right some objects are on the fabric some are on the table next to it and they are sitting all on the flat surface but the fabric goes same fabric goes up on the table and droops down so think about it as such which means that you probably preparing for that you would want to lower your cube mm -hmm. as thinking like this gonna represent my table and if this represents my table then I would dedicate less to the lower portion what hangs off of the table and I'll concentrate more on how it hangs up above it mm -hmm. right on the on the tables in this case on the cube and how it hangs up above it so which means you basically you're cutting off everything below you're leaving it a little bit less space uh, and more space for the the rest of it and attached to the wall so i'm going to measure from the corner of the cube to just above the pins just a little bit above the pins and i'm going to see like where i'm cutting it off lower how it fits in there all right so the approximate proportions is one distance of this to two distances of this and you measure it from like the bottom mm -hmm. where it's so i just so i sketched it in where i want my table to be right i put these two lines and i said okay this is where my paper ends so this is what i have for hanging off the cube this distance so then i measure this distance and i see that it fits in here two times and it comes right above here uh -huh. all right so it's one two three and hits right above here and that means that if i take i want to raise it a little bit so that means if i take my whole composition and i include the area where the pins are pin pinning it to the wall so I, uh, I will end my composition right here I'm not going to draw past this so this will be my one measurement two three this is where my whole composition ends and my pins come a little bit short of oh. that okay so this is just all going to be free space and my basic my basically drawing or painting I'm not going to paint past this point which is empty wall and I'm not going to paint much past this point you see I'm just excluding that where I'm going to go sideways I will go and stop right around these areas as well but I don't need to measure the width because it's a free-flowing fabric you can make it go past it or you can stop it it's it, it's okay if it comes off of the page completely you Why see because yeah, because it's a lot we're not trying to paint completely the whole fabric sitting there drooped over those objects we're trying to take just a portion of this composition a portion of what you see and uh, practice on it right yeah we are leaving out everything over here we are going to get some of this but some of this here may come off on the side 
Mm. And some of this may end up being outside of our So do you just pay attention to like, ah yes, these spots in particular look very interesting. Right. Exactly. And where it, and how it comes to the wall and it's hooked up. The pins are not necessary, just how it comes to the wall. Mm. So what you wanna do is you wanna give just enough realism in here so it makes sense. So you don't want to go berserk with what's going on way over there. You just want to concentrate on portion of it. Just like if you are, uh, let's say, if you are doing only a, a drapery over the figure, somebody's sitting, they have a long flowing gown or something, and you want to only do the study of how that fabric droops over the knee. Mm. Obviously, you're not including the rest of the body, but you have to decide where you're going to cut off your uh, artwork, right? <laughs> where the knee is going to be, how the folds are folding, light shadow, is the knee going to be lower, higher, which part of the drapery is more important to you at this point to mm -hmm. sketch, to practice on, right? Yeah. All right. So this corner is like our knee. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying we're going to position it lower because we're preparing for still life drawing and painting where this represents the edge of the table, mm -hmm. right? All right, so in that case, now that you said, all right, I have this corner here. This corner is positioned slightly off center to the right instead of right on center, which would be right here. We don't want everything exactly down the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that? We want things slightly off. Nothing is exactly symmetrical in nature and in artwork when things are slightly off and unless it's a geometric form like a cube or a cylinder. Yeah. That's, that's the only time where everything has to be precise. But where you put that cube, don't put it right in the center, right? Yeah. Don't stack them up exactly down the center, down the middle. It's going to be boring. But uh, so that's the only time you want to be precise in drawing the uh, objects that are geometric exactly right. But once you do in the composition, you don't want things down the middle. So slightly off the corner. So all of this we already know is going to be in the shadow because the fabric, once it hits that side of the cube, it becomes all in the fabric. Somehow it droops and goes up. So just need to find where does it attach. Is it attaching here? here or here to the wall and because we have this corner we need to com compare where are those pins attaching the whole thing and you just put your pencil up and down you take a look looks like the pins are attaching slightly off to the right mm. see just slightly and they're kind of like attaching at a slight little angle so this is where our pins are attached the fabric is hooked up to the wall. That means that all of our folds are going to come in this direction, sort of like a fan, right? A fan. Like a fan, like a fan opens up. All the folds are going to come out from this point, right? Mm -hmm. So we can start easy. We can say to ourselves, we have this corner. That's the cube under. Let's put a couple of folds that come right off of this point. You see that big first fold? Yeah. You see that it uh, w deep kind of shadow in there. It looks like it almost follows the side of the cube first and then it kind of stands away from it a bit. That's our first one. And then it comes off, off the page off of our composition. The second one comes kind of in this direction and it almost makes like a very stretched out fish shape. Fish? Fish. If you put an eye in here, it looks like a fish. Fishy, fishy. And this is the tail, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, I'm seeing that that fold looks kind of fishy. Um, see, I'm just putting the main shape for it, just to indicate the direction. I'm not doing all of the folds. Mostly, I'm just looking at the terminator, right, where the light hits the side and no more light gets in here. I'm not doing the other side where the light is yet. So, wait, what do you mean you're not doing all the folds? Aren't you going to... Uh, no, uh, I'm not doing the light portion of it right here. 
uh -huh. I'm only following the darker, the terminator basically, right? Uh -huh. Where the light no longer gets, direct light no longer gets to this portion of the fabric. I'm just doing that as a guideline. This terminator is easy to see, this next one will be easy to see, and I'm going to be first sketching out based on those. Mm. All the other details of where the light and shadow is will come second. So do you just like put like lines, like let's say like leaf, like where it attaches to like uh, the branch, you just put a line being like oh it's going in this direction. Yeah. And then after that you kind of shape it and they're just like good to go. Yep. Kind of like that, yeah. Mm. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just thinking, all right, I see this fish, I want to put it in here. Here's my fish. Some of the lines can be even straighter, but this is just such a distinct shape that I'm thinking, no, we need to capture that already as a fish. All right. So the one next to it now, I'm following the terminator next to it. it and at one point here, just off of the side of the table, because you can see distinctly where that side is, right? By the looks of the fabric. You can see that it's like it's not too far from this corner and as it comes down it also stays kind of close to this shape here and so it comes down and you can even go in there and transfer your angle and say okay this is the angle of it like this this is what I'm seeing maybe even closer move it yeah that's better so then it hits this table and it changes the angle it starts going this way and it makes this squiggly sort of shape like a very delicate s shape and it comes where right under the first pin right under the first pin it kind of goes along the wall a bit straight and then it comes out away from the wall and then somehow unites with this area, right? So if we bring it a little bit more toward the wall in this direction, then you can go in there and even pick up that angle. Transfer it in here and say, okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. Does it go very far this way? No, it doesn't. It's like a very short distance. And then see already, if you connect this two, you see this. But here it goes along the wall. Means the wall's not that far behind there. But the fabric over here is not following the wall anymore. It's only following the wall here. That means that this has to start curving away. Right around here. And then it has to curve back toward the wall. And basically you look at it and you go like, okay, it goes this way and then goes this way. It goes this way for a shorter distance and it goes back toward the wall for a longer distance. This mm -hmm. is a little longer, this is a little shorter. See if you like, it's mm -hmm. shorter, shorter, and then one long stretch. And it does have a bit of a curvature, so we'll start giving this a curvature. Started as a straight line, now we're giving it a bit of a curvature, right? Mm -hmm. So now we can come in here and get a few more curves. This curves over the table. This goes this way, starts curving. Gentle curve. Curving, curving, hitting the wall. So this is again just following our shapes that are uh, the ter uh, terminators, right? Where the light is coming down and no longer hitting it directly. So it's the darkest portion of the shadow. All right, so now we're starting to feel a little bit of the flatness of the table. We are going to go in here. Now it's starting to become a little easier. And we're going to go with another shadow that we've seen coming off of this corner that follows the cube for a little while. Then it kind of droops down stands away from that surface, from the flatness, 
and it starts turning again kind of following the same direction of the cube but now it's away from its side and it starts curving up so we have another pin somewhere in here right and you can see how this curvature heads right toward that second pin and what, what is happening at the pin? Because before we bring it here, we need to know, do we bring it right to the pin, slightly below the pin? So again, you look at it and you ask yourself, like, what am I seeing? I'm seeing that, that right from the pin, it curves, like it stands away from it. It's like jumps away from the wall. And you can even go and even measure that angle and say, okay, that's good, jumping away. Then it's turning this way and it's going kind of down and at an angle transfer this angle and it gives you the idea for how sharply it's traveling in this direction and where does it how does it curve it's like a very big generous curve right generous generous it's not a tight curve it doesn't curve very quickly it's like it's pretty big in here right yeah it's like gives us plenty of time to study it like oh yeah it's going down a little bit flatter slowly starting to curve up then it's kind of curving more up and then it's coming up all the way here looks like a bag mm -hmm. looks like a bag and if you look at that it's those two shadows this one and this one, if you look at it, yeah, it does look kind of like a bag, right? A bag shape, good. So you, you look at what you drew, you look at that, and you go like, yeah, actually it does look like a bag. So you must be in the, going in the right direction. You see in the same shape here as over there. So all right, so all we need to do is, here it's kind of turning quickly, so it's not too soft, not too small that. All right, so now it comes out from here. This is actually the very edge. And you can see like it comes out in this direction, forming this a little bit of a sharper kind of point in here. But then it also comes down in this direction. And you can even uh, look at that one and bring it over and say, oh yeah, it's going toward here. So this one's going this way and this one's going more like that. Here's its direction. It's going more toward this curvature and now it's very hard to tell. Is it just disappearing behind or what is happening? But I see something coming out on this side behind this thing. Is it that? Is it a different thing? Can't tell. What do you do? You, you walk over. <laughs> you walk over and you study and you go like, oh, okay, so this fold goes over here. This one really is hiding behind it. And we're seeing a little bit of other folds behind. Ah, good. So, so now you know. So now you don't have to guess and you can draw it correctly. So this one really is, let's measure it, transfer it. This one really is coming down like that. And it's a continuation of that side of the fabric and the other one is just hiding behind it we just need to make sure it hides behind it in the proper place which is right about here you look at it and you go yeah it's right where this thing starts to kind of go up but not totally in this direction okay we hid it behind the right place from behind here something else is coming out but look we're hitting our boundary right so we we i said we won't go out of this line this will this is where our just study will end so all we need is just this little thing that it's coming out we don't need to worry about it anymore what it's doing down here and we see that from behind this fold another one comes out and it also it's like it's very thin and once we hit this boundary okay we stop we don't need to worry about anything else that's going on with those fabrics in fine detail. Okay. Okay. It's just going to be in the shadow. Yeah, it's going to be in the shadow and it's, it's disappearing. You might just want to give it a little indication that there's a couple of other folds, but like very sketchily. 
but like I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> right. So basically what you're doing is right in here everything is going to be oh and the cast a little shadow on the wall, right? Let's put the little cast shadow on the wall. That's kinda cool. Here's the cast shadow on the wall. And right here is where the other shadow of the fabric might as well just indicate it right now. Where is it going? It's going, going along. And it overlaps this one, makes this one disappear. So all of this is another shadow. All of this is in the shadow. All of this is in the shadow. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Yes. And let's bring, erase this table now. Don't need it so much. And all of this is shadow. in the shadow. So basically you said, all right, we got one major area staked out. Remember that this is where the fabric ends and this is a cast shadow, right? Mm -hmm. All righty. So already we've done like majority of our sketching in here. Let's uh, put in a few more folds and get our shadows staked out as well. So we got this one. Out of here comes out another fold and it kind of goes over the edge of the uh, cube here. And the edge of the cube, you just want to make sure you capture that not too widely, right? So it doesn't look too wide compared to what you're looking at. And you already kind of have this distance here, so you can just compare with your measurement and say, okay, from the corner to that big generous fold is about the same distance from this corner to this fold is about the same distance as to the edge of the cube. Kind of like that. So the edge of the cube is going obviously up and down, but the fabric having that stiffness, it doesn't quite follow the corner precisely. It kind of just hits it and past this corner, it's definitely going more down and past this corner up, it's kind of like trying to follow a little more with the flat surface of the cube. So we found this, which means now we need to somehow connect it back to the pins. You look at where it's, what is it doing at the pins, at the pins it's coming out like sort of like a zigzaggy shape, kind of like that, right? Does it look like a distorted or bendy triangle? Uh-huh. And so you, you look for that, you look for that shape. Mm -hmm. and you just sketch it in and then now you look for a connection between these two. What do you see? You see that this one coming up it kind of comes up close to this fold somewhere here halfway up and makes a sharper turn kind of like it's very sharply bent in there and then it gently uh, connects to this thing. Okay, so if I do it this way, it uh, kind of looks very similar, maybe even closer. Yeah. Maybe a bit closer, maybe not. Because uh, remember, this is a terminator, so we still need room for our light and the shadow and so on. So I'm looking at that, I'm going like, okay, this one is bending here a little bit higher, perhaps like that. So again, uh, remember this is all for the sake of studying the fabric, not for the sake of super pooper accuracy, right? <laughs> so this is uh, for us to capture what fabrics do when they droop over other surfaces. Okay, here's our uh, sharper bend and goes toward here. 
Also, when you're practicing, it doesn't have to look super good, especially when you're starting off. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, one, once you sketch this out and paint it, we just need to practice light, shadow, colors that are not too muddy, reflections. So, when you're like doing, like especially when you're drawing or painting anything, like values makes it really look 3D. Mm -hmm. Like without values and then like you're just like, oh, well here's a finished product. It's just going to be like, oh, mm -hmm. what is that? Yeah, so this is not so much about worrying about uh, like great accuracy as capturing the ba basic idea of how fabric when it hangs down, hits something flatter and f hangs off of that edge, right? Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, okay, it's coming over off of this corner and folds toward the even the lower table in there. So we got this shape. Again, there's another fold behind that, just to be sure. Come over here, take a look. Alright, this one goes here. This is a whole other one. This is where the corner is, right behind this thing. And so this is a whole other one that kind of connects to this one, right? Oh. So, we know that it's a separate one now. So, and it's right behind it. This one is right behind here, coming off, hanging off of the same corner. We can't see it from where I'm standing, but we just walked over there and that's what we saw, so so we know what's going on. And so it hides behind there, but it comes out like right here where this little band is happening. The other fold comes out and where this band is happening, the other one on the other is happening kind of across it and lower. And that's what I'm looking for. And then it's he heading back up here, joining right in here. Wow, it's a lot of weird triangles. Yeah. So, got that. And so the, the rest of it is basically like this portion in the back. And this portion in the back just needs to be sketchy. We don't want to see it much. No, probably not this much. So I'm looking at this corner again. It's kind of going like this, like this. It's behind there. It's coming up right across here, changing direction. like this, something like this, all right. So this one is sketchier. It's in the back. We don't need to worry about it too much, okay? Few, as stuff goes away, fewer details. So that's why I'm leaving it very, very sketchy and just connecting it so it just makes some sense and that's it. Nothing super detailed. All right, um, where do we see light and shadow? The very main one is forming right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and stake out this one. So basically all of this is in the shadow. I see that in this area, this folds they are also forming some of the light and shadow differences. Okay, so I will go ahead and draw this out. This is... I'm just looking for like what kind of shadow does it make right here. It folds turns around, turns around kind of like this, and then the light comes out, and then it goes in. Here there's plenty of light, here it becomes 
comes almost to just the shadow edge and then it comes out and shows us a little bit of light on the fabric right here so right here it's a skinny little piece of light and here it's all shadow go ahead and stick it stick it out stick the shadow territory okay everything over here is starting to be a shadow except for this little slither of light following this fold right and it follows this fold for a little while until past this past this bend it starts to head over in to this connection you see that this fold this the fold that formed this shadow right mm. is also connecting to this shadow here and you always want to look for all of those like relationships so because it's one piece of fabric and it's following all of this together none of the folds uh, are separate from each other they all have to make sense you all have to come out and make some kind of sense they can't like one thing does one thing one fold does one thing the other does something else doesn't work like that here's another shadow behind this one you see another milder change in value where does it start starts right here where does it end ends right above this area in a kind of pointy way okay i'll stick out the pointy and now i'm gonna see what kind of sh shape does it make it kind of makes comes here narrower comes out a little wider here we go here's another one another change in value it's it's like a shadow but it's still getting a, either a lot of reflected light in it or it's like a milder basically milder shadow there's something in here like this edge forms a little shadow now i'm really going just a little sketchy just a little suggestions Suggestion? just suggestions that there's like light and shadow changes happening in there but what kind i'm not even doing it like super precise right the more precise areas are in the main portions of where our interest is how do you know whether to add something or kind of get rid of it like there's there's a lot of folds over there but i know it's not like the main attraction but like you still add like a few of them and mostly leave the rest behind uh, so we are not leaving them so much behind as simplifying mm. so uh, what I'm doing is I am now going into more detail right so uh, I first had the main directions stake out, staked out guided by the basically by the terminators in each shadow right but now I'm working more on how they're folding where the light is where the shadows are here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and just give this a light light pass oh why would i do that to say that this is our flatter plane this is where the light is the strongest and this is already more mild because it's going down vertically right where else is a similar thing happening the fabric goes this way turns goes with the plane a little bit not exactly following the cube but in a similar direction a little more up and then it goes up the wall that means that at some point especially in this fold it's starting to go up more like this fabric similar angle right except up the wall 
so if you look at it you see like okay this fold here it's pretty strong light but here it's actually more mild once once you get to this turn and at this turn there is where the fabric is traveling more up again so it's a different angle of the light Ooh. see see how it now starts to actually fold with the cube so that's what you need to look for as well what else is happening uh, in this one here it's it's a milder look it's like right because of this turn it's starting to look a little bit darker over this way but not along the edge here it's where it still picks up a stronger light right it's that emphasis between light and shadow so let's let's go ahead and finish this one so this one is interesting the shadow under this fold is very skinny right in here because this is where it like touches the table so closely hugs at the table slash cube it makes a nice roundish fold because the fabric has its own bounce you know, its own roundness and then it goes away and it's somewhat similar to this form here the shape that this fold forms the shadow from this fold is somewhat similar in the, on the edge here so it kind of goes a little bit down so it follows the table but then it kind of goes a little down what it tells me is that the fabric has a little bit bounciness right in here if you came here and tapped on this portion in the fabric you would see that there is a little space between it and the and the cube uh huh. Yeah, bounciness. See. So, because of that, when you're standing from the back, you see that there's see that there's a little give in there. That means there's like an eighth of an inch or something of air before it touches the table right on this corner, right before mm -hmm. it touches the cube. That's why there is a little bit of this curvature in here. This is why this shadow is not coming out straight like this it's not coming out straight it's coming out with this little curvature so here's where it's totally touching and sitting on the edge of the table and here's where it's that little bounce has a little bit of this curvature then it hits the table it goes with the table a little bit because you know it has its own weight so it has to hit the table in some places so here's that little bounce hits the table goes with the table for a little bit and starts traveling up and over to here but where and how similar to this fold you look at it and you go like wow those two are very very similar by the way, all that bouncing you did, it changed this sh shape here <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> a looks. little bit. I'll fix it. So anyways, all right, it's coming up more like that and goes up and joins right into this corner here. And right down here, the shadow itself is, it is becoming a little wider again, getting close to that fish shape. Then it kind of follows the sh fish shape along this path. And then it kind of starts to go away from it a little bit more. Right? Yeah. So all of this is your shadow, shadow deeper kind of shadow right in the fish shape all of this is going to be a shadow except for the very edge right here so we can stake it out this is the edge that doesn't get so much of a shadow it just gets this medium tone and this is your pretty much all of your shadow here Is the reason why you left that one look like that part white is because uh, it's meeting shadow? Mm-hmm. 
it's so but the, you also look at it and you see that it's quite a bit light lighter maybe you, uh, after all the bouncing we're done it's gotten okay there we go so anyways um, it's going down so it's not as bright as the rest but it's not as bright as this portions in the light but it still is a bit lighter than the shadow right mm -hmm. so now you see that it's actually folding everything is following the table here is your other shadow and within those shadows you can work on like slightly darker areas but sketching before you paint this is totally sufficient if you just sketch that even like this before you started painting you will be already way ahead mm -hmm. um, I'm going to like carve out a little bit more of the light here very very light area so we don't forget about it our light and shadow is still at work gets a little bit wider here it's a little narrower so while this is slightly darker the whole thing is obviously in that mid medium light right it's not super bright and the same thing is happening here on the edge and now you just tune everything down so medium not, nothing is as light as bright and one other thing that you see happening like right here for example this one is following all of this folds follows right into this one so there's a tiny tiny little it's like the the tiny little connection between here and here it's so tiny bit of light but it's there it's very thin in this area but it's there and there's like a medium tone here like a medium uh, not a very strong shadow but it's slightly darker because this is your main shadow, your main fold and this is kind of a medium there is a little bit of this coming down becoming the brightest, the lightest there is a little bit of this medium kind of light value coming down with this being the brightest alright and um, Oh, there is a little bit of a like irregularity here like that would be kind of fun to paint a little bit of a darker sort of like a dent in the fabric a little bit of a dent and a little bit of a lighter area forming with this kind of little funny looking wrinkle that's slightly darker shadow right here it kind of blends and disappears into the rest of it and this one is kind of blending disappearing into the rest of it so this little detail here again helps us emphasize that this is the edge of the table and all of our slightly darker values become even more dark right toward the edge right even though they are not as dark as these deeper shadows they are medium light kind of they still get some direct light on them but they're starting to be close to being in the shadow but they all get slightly darker toward these edges mm. and right here if you stake this out as darker that will bring this corner more forward right mm -hmm and if you stake out this as darker right now that will bring this corner more forward you do some cross hatching and some not cross hatching yeah it's you just need a quick sketch mm -hmm. so 
all of this could be given a little bit of a darker value. And by the way, right behind this area here, it also becomes very, well, I wouldn't say like very, very dark, but it becomes kind of darker. Helps us feel this edge. Helps us see that this is like way behind there. So all of this light will stand out more if you if you have this a little bit darker here I'll just go in the other direction so you would see that it's a different plane right it's going in this other direction all right so um, you can start with that for your for your under sketch for the painting this way you will not forget where all the main areas are and because it's white you don't probably don't even need to give it a whole pass maybe a little very very mild yellow but even that I'm a little wary about because it's too easy to overdo with yellow is. yeah to, it, unless you are able to completely just have very little bit of pigment and lots of water and give it like very mild wash so uh, you can do that or you can just start painting and just give a little yellow to the lightest areas later. Okay. Just, just to show the warmth in the light, right? Shadows cooler, uh, light uh, warmer. Maybe some permanent roads. Um, I, for this, I wouldn't do it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's kind of peachy though. Well, okay, if you want. If you want to give it slightly peachier appearance, mm -hmm. you can do that. I'm just seeing it as more like plain white. Oh. Concentrating on um, light, shadow, and reflections. Okay. Getting, getting the, um, the folds to flow properly and look like a flowing fabric not broken up fabric right not not too stiff not too broken up of course obviously within here we have more what do we have we have uh, we have the actual fold we see uh, past terminator there's a reflection this is a cast shadow so all of this it needs to be painted in right we are only sketching it for painting so we're not doing all the rest of the details. Mm. So for sketching it for painting, this is where you can stop and go ahead and start painting. You don't even need to do it quite so dark with the pencil. Mm. 